Thank you. This is Becky Wilsey, our guest musician today, who's usually at the Presbyterian Church, so thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Carol Gable, currently the president of the board of UU Utica. Thank you for being here today. I'm so pleased to announce and welcome our guest minister today, Pastor Mike Ballman from Utica's Cornerstone Community Church and Plymouth Bethesda Church, which is right off of Oneida Square downtown Utica. Pastor Mike is a graduate of Houghton University, a nationally ranked Christian university south of Buffalo, New York, and um, as well as husband to Pam and father to Noah. He's also a chaplain in the US Army Reserves. If you're not familiar with the Cornerstone Community Church, their motto is do justice, love mercy, walk humbly, and they truly live into this. The church has operated the Moral Warming Center from its kitchen for the past several years, which currently serves dinners and Sunday breakfast to anyone who needs a meal. Pastor Mike has called on Utica leaders to do a better job on serving Utica's homeless population and helping them for years, and they finally seem to be listening. The Cornerstone Church also operates the United Square Initiative, which has contributed to the public art in downtown Utica. Welcome, Pastor Mike. We're so glad to have you with us. Whether you are visiting us for the first time or have been a member for many years, you are welcome here. Whatever faith you have known, if any, you are welcome here. Whoever you are and whomever you love, you are welcome here. We are invited to bring our whole selves to this worship service, our doubts as well as our convictions, the pain and joy we have known, our longing for connection and understanding. Every part of you is welcome here. Our congregation acknowledges that the land on which UU Utica is situated is the ancestral lands of the Oneida Nation, one of the original nations of the Haudenosaunee. If you're visiting us today for the first time, either in person or online, 
Uh, we're glad you have joined us. We would love to learn more about you and connect you with our newsletter if you like. There's a link in the chat to a form we hope any online visitors would like to fill out to get our newsletter and um, we'll hope you'll stay uh, for after church conversation. But we do have a couple of announcements and one is that the board and Reverend Karen are hosting a meeting about 10 minutes after the church in the back where RE used to be um, to discuss the proposed changes to the Article 2 um, section of the bylaws of the UUA. As a reminder, this section of the bylaws pertains to the principles of our UU faith and a vote on the proposed changes will be held at General Assembly this June. So please grab a cup of coffee and join us in the back room if you're interested in learning more and discussing uh, at about 10 minutes after the service. Those of you who are on Zoom are welcome to join us as well. We'll have the Zoom set up. There will be another meeting after church on May 14 to follow up on today's discussion, if needed, and to provide input to the board in preparation of the Jan June 11th annual meeting that we'll have after church. Our board has been working hard on proposing um, updates to UU Utica's bylaws, and these will be shared with the congregation in May for a vote at the annual meeting in June. And one more announcement by Mary. Did you want to come on up? Hello, my beloveds. Um, as you know, I'm the coordinator for the coffee hour. And I got to say how grateful and appreciative I am, and I think we all are, when people step up and provide this lovely opportunity for us to socialize and uh, be with one another after the service. Um, I'd like to make people aware, I haven't got anybody who has signed up for May 21st, May 28th, June 4th, June 11th. And it would be a very sad thing if we are not able to provide coffee hour. So to make it easy, right on the table is the sign up sheet and I would very much appreciate it if people would find it in their hearts to be able to do this. And if you can't provide, um, the church can provide um, some of the food uh, uh, as necessary. Not a problem. You let me know and, and away we go. So uh, thank you in advance for your help with this ministry. Let us now open our hearts and minds to the experience of community and the wisdom of love. Um, Reverend Karen, would you light the chalice while I share the chalice lighting? These words are by Bruce Southworth. For the gift of this day and for our community of spiritual nurture and compassion, we give thanks. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. May our many sparks meet and merge in communion of heart and soul. Thank you. Now if people will stand as they are able and join us in singing hymn number 346, Come Sing a Song with Me. Dream with me that 
hard to find and I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time come share a rose with me come share a rose with me come share a rose with me that I might know your mind and I'll bring you when hope is hard to find and I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time good morning it is very fun to be back there singing with you, and part of that is because this man has inspired so much in me and in you. How many of you have actually cooked at the Mara Warming Center? At least two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. We really care about the ministry you do, and it matters. It really matters. Um, I will be, by the way, after this, in the back with any children or people young of heart who would like to help create with finger paint um, the back of our general assembly banner that is hanging. The front of it is what Kim Bywater produced. That's going to general assembly this year, and we're going to create the back of it with rainbow colors. And so the words of welcome, the call to worship, the invocation that brings our hearts and our spaces and our spirits here are the words of Starhawk. We are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned. We can only catch glimpses of it from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us, eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. May it be so. Thank you, Reverend Karen. It's uh, time for our together time, time for our together time, for our children's story. And uh, I don't know if people want to, do any children want to come up front to see the pictures better? Uh, you don't have to, but the book is called The Circles All Around Us. So maybe you can draw circles while we're um, doing the circle book anyway, since you're all set up with crayons and paper. Circles. Circles is a theme. We begin by drawing circle on the ground along each shoe. Nobody in this circle... Uh, wait a minute, sorry. Let me start over. We begin by drawing a circle on the ground along each shoe, a safe little place for just one person, nobody in this circle but you. You could keep that circle closed to everyone but yourself, but that would be like a library with just one book on its shelf. So let's draw a bigger circle for you and your family to share. Now you see what all can happen in a circle full of care. More people in the circle pictures of all sorts of families in the circle. It becomes a happier circle as more loved ones come to stay, and wouldn't it be even better if all your friends could come and play? Needing a bigger circle. So you stretch and draw your circle even bigger than it's been and let a few more people know they're welcome to come in. In the circles all around us, everywhere that we all go, there is a difference we can make and a love we can all show. All right, now the circles are getting really big and there's lots of words. Hello, ciao, salute, aloha. Yet there are still so many outside the circle who are different in all they do. Though it feels slightly uncomfortable, we draw a bigger circle for them too. 
It doesn't mean the circle is easy. It can get harder the more we share. But wonderful things can happen when love is known and felt everywhere. As time passes, our eyes open, we see others really care. And that's when we ask ourselves, well, what's this circle, circle really there for? So let us create bigger circles all around us for the rest of our days. Let our caring ripple out in a million little ways. In the circles all around us, everywhere that we all go, there's a difference we can make and a love we can all show. As our circles grow and grow and we watch them wonder-eyed, remember the first circle started with just the love you held inside. Circles, that's the theme today. And um, I guess you guys are gonna work on the banner here? Oh, right back here in the corner. Okay, great, great. Um, our reading today is an excerpt from a poem from Naomi Shihab Nye. Naomi is an award-winning poet whose father was Palestinian and whose mother was American. She was uh, the chancellor of the Academy, American Academy of Poets through, from 2010 through 2015. This is National Poetry Month. I think it's the last day, April 30th. Yes, April's National Poetry Month. And the poem is Red Brocade. The Arabs used to say, when a stranger appears at your door, feed him for three days before asking who he is, where he's come from, where he's headed. That way he'll have strength enough to answer, or by then you'll be such good friends, you don't care. Now we'll hear from Reverend Mike, or Pastor Mike, thanks. Good morning, everyone. As Reverend Karen said, um, we are so thankful for your congregation and all of your help and support at the Morrow Center cooking. It's always uh, really fun when you guys come uh, and we get to um, spend time with each other and get to know each other. Uh, as I was looking out on the congregation, um, I saw that you have a four-legged uh, uh, parishioner this morning. <laughs> And it reminded me of uh, one of my favorite movies, Best in Show. Have anyone seen Best in Show? Where she says, God loves a terrier. Remember that song? <laughs> so uh, it reminded me of that. So uh, thank you so much uh, for having uh, us today uh, from Cornerstone. And uh, we feel a real kinship with you here. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that you know how uh, special you are to us. As you know, we have been, as a church, uh, advocating for those, especially our neighbors that we see right in Oneida Square, who have no place to stay, who often end up finding refuge on our porches and, and in, our, in our church. And there was a time this winter where I was very discouraged. Um, we were not making very much headway with any kind of government support. In fact, not only were we not making headway, we seemed to be um, butting heads a lot, and um, in this time, um, I, uh, I wrote a letter that I'd like to share with you to, to someone who I, I uh, see as a mentor in the community, and um, this is what I wrote. I said, if you would allow me to speak freely and lean on you for counsel, um, I'm trying to do everything. I'm saying the right things in public. I'm using the right private channel to the ex county executive judiciously. I'm patiently working with the rescue mission and the Department of, so of Social Services and everyone within their system. And we are feeding over 70 people, uh, offering showers, laundry, and clothing in a warm space and community seven nights a week. And yet there are still dozens of vulnerable people sleeping out in the cold every night. I am fighting my instincts to reopen the Morrow Center at night and make this humanitarian crisis public, but as we know from what happened last year, it cost me my health and, the, and my staffs and the financial viability of the church. 
but I still can't sleep at night when I close our doors knowing that I'm sending elderly, infirmed, mentally and emotionally challenged people who have become my friends into the streets with no place to shelter them. What can I do? What are we doing as a community? And what we are doing is not enough. And so I, I told you that um, it's really hard for me not to fight the instinct to just open church and be there every night myself because I can't stand to see them. But last year I did that for, I think, over 90 straight evenings, overnights, and my wife really didn't love that. And, um, and I ended up getting sick uh, and going to the hospital for a few days. And it took everything in me this year to fight the instinct to just do it myself. But that's where you as a community gave me hope this year to have other partners that can help us. Now, we still don't have the ability to house people at night, but through our advocacy this year, we were able to really push the powers that be to make sure that there is an evening place, an overnight place. And it still wasn't enough this year, but we're hoping that next year we can push them even harder. But what I came to understand in this struggle what are we going to do? People are suffering. Um, it made me think of something that we as people of faith can do better than the government or anyone else can do. And that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. We can be friends with those who are struggling. And one thing we talk about all the time at Cornerstone is that we don't do charity. We do justice. We do equality. We do friendship. We, there's not a power dynamic in what we do. We are friends opening our doors for our neighbors to come share in what we have. And so um, Pope Francis said this, actually, and he said, I want a church which is poor and for the poor. They have much to teach us in their difficulties. They know the suffering Christ. We need to let ourselves be evangelized by them. Now, I know that's hard, easy for him to say from a golden castle, um, but, but his words were struck, they rang true to me. Um, but he emphasizes, unless we are mindful about practicing solidarity, involving those most affected by the issue in its solution, empowering them, unless they are involved in the solution, then it will always be charity and not friendship. And that's something that I've learned over the years is that the way that people talk about our most vulnerable neighbors as if they are not fully human, the way that they uh, avoid eye contact, the way that they um, avoid seeing them as human is something that we as people of faith can teach everyone and we need to teach ourselves Dorothy Day once said we need always be thinking and writing about poverty for we for if we are not among its victims its reality fades from us we must talk about poverty because people insulated by their own comfort lose sight of it and this is what has happened to most Americans in their attitude towards poverty today one thing that I uh, didn't take comfort in is that uh, our church became a uniting uh, force for the city. Everybody hates the homeless, and we brought them all together, conservative, liberal, progressive. I was, it was shocking to see that um, diversity and equity inclusion stops short of the unhoused and the deeply poor, and that was tr very troubling for me. And so, uh, to quote Pope Francis again, he says, look not for big glossy moments of change. And that's something that I'm always looking for. I think in my mind, I'm always looking for that, that victory moment. But he says, look not for those glossy moments of change, but for opportunities to join in the rawness of life. That's what we can do as people of faith. It is essential to draw near to new forms of poverty and vulnerability in which we are called to recognize the suffering 
even if this appears to bring us no tangible and immediate benefits. I think of the homeless, the addicted, refugees, indigenous peoples, the elderly who are increasingly isolated and abandoned, and many others. So this is what we are trying to do and asking you as our partners to do. Ask not how you can be of service. This is what we ask of ourselves but how you can enter into friendship. Our commitment consists in an attentiveness which considers the other in a certain sense as one with ourselves. There is no other, there is only us. We are called to find God in them, to lend our voice to their causes, but also to be their friends, to listen to them, to speak for them, and to embrace the mysterious wisdom which God wishes to share with us through them. They are our friends. And so one thing we are doing at, at uh, the Morrow Center is we are pivoting a little bit uh, this spring, and we are moving from providing just emergency services, um, but we are really pivoting to doing activities where we have the time and the ability uh, to really get to know people. Uh, sometimes at dinner, it's really, it's kind of quick and fast, and it's hard to to just sit down and catch someone, but we are going to be, uh, Kathy Marsh, our, our, um, our resident artist, just received a grant to do a project called Art from the Streets, which we are gonna open up our studio, our art studio, and uh, people can come, our unhoused neighbors can come and use all of the art equipment that we have and create art. Uh, there's, um, a, a book which escapes me, it's new, it's called um, How Art Changes Us, something like that. And um, we are really recognizing the, the divinity in that, the divine, that in creating, we engage something greater than ourselves and we become, and it opens up avenues for us to build friendships. And so we're working on art, uh, music, we have a music studio that we are opening up uh, for people, uh, and we actually have many of our unhoused neighbors are very uh, talented musically. We have a piano in our, our um, fellowship hall, and we have a few that just like to kind of sneak up to the piano and play for everyone, and it's beautiful. And what I found is people are shocked that, that one of our, our neighbors who doesn't have a place to call home is such a talented pianist. And you say, well, why wouldn't they be? They're human. But we forget that, don't we, sometimes? And so we are really, uh, and we would invite you to be a part of that, not only in our feeding. We're doing dinners two nights a week now instead of seven on Sundays and Tuesdays. Um, but then throughout the week, w f during daytime and some evening hours, we'll be doing enrichment activities so that people can feel like they can create and they can feel the divine, the spark of the divine in them and their humanity by being able to do things that we take for granted, by being able to go to an art class uh, or a meditation class or a yoga class or um, we have a community garden that we're going to be encouraging our neighbors to help grow things with us and cooking and things that we are just saying, we're not just serving you out of charity, we're opening up our entire home and all that we have so that we can be friends and so it just I'll, I'll end with some thoughts the apostle Paul said this about his time in Philippi he said you know brothers and sisters that our visit to you was not without results we had previously suffered and been treated outrageously as you know but with the help of our God we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition for the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives. No, we are not trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as though approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know that we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though as apostles we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. 
This is the friendship that we hope to create. We are hoping to create a community of not just people who call Cornerstone or Plymouth Bethesda their church home, but a community of people like yourselves from all different faiths and from all different um, parts of our community, all different socioeconomic classes, all different ethnicities. We want to create a community where everyone is equal and there is justice and everyone is a part of the community. And so the Apostle Paul says, just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the good news, but our lives as well. And that is our desire. And thank you for sharing your lives with us and our, our neighbors. And he ends by saying, surely you remember, and, but then they stop calling me Shirley. No, I'm sorry. I always have to do that. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters. I'm a big airplane fan. I'm sorry. Um, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we shared the good news of God with you. And so thank you for being a partner with us. Thank you for helping us build friendships. Thank you for recognizing that in us. Uh, it is a, a privilege to be united with you in this in this most important task of building friendships and justice with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mike. I look forward to the new adventures in art and particularly in the community garden. I'm all on board with that. I already told Kathy I love community gardens. Um, so please uh, rise if you are able and join us in singing hymn number 84, How Far Can Reach a Smile. This, uh, our meditation prayer today is a poem by Maya Angelou called Alone. Lying, thinking last night how to find my soul a home where water is not thirsty and bread loaf is not stone. I came up with one thing and I don't believe I'm wrong that nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone, nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Now, if you listen closely, I'll tell you what I know. Storm clouds are gathering. The wind is going to blow. The race of man is suffering. And I can hear the moan, because nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. We know that our financial contributions to this congregation come from sacrifice and hard work. We are so grateful for this and commit to ensure the funds we gather collectively do greater good than, um, in our world than they could have done alone. 
May there be an offering to sustain and grow the life and mission of this congregation. May we give in hope and in love. We'll now extinguish our chalice. Ken, would you extinguish the chalice while I read the words? And hopefully uh, you will join me. The words are in your order of service. Now we will extinguish our chalice. We extinguish its flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. Go forth in simplicity is our benediction today. The words are by Sam Trumbor. Go forth in simplicity, find and walk the path that leads to compassion and wisdom, that leads to happiness, peace, and ease. Welcome the stranger and open your heart to a world in need of healing. Be courageous before the forces of hate. Hold and embody a vision of the common good that serves the needs of all people. And Mary's going to help at the end of this song, right, Mary? <laughs> All of you are. At the end of the song, you got to sing Love is the Answer. No, love one another. Love is another. Such a lonely, lonely, lonely world. People turn their heads and walk on by. Tell me, is it worth just another try? Light of the world shining on me. Love is the answer. Let it shine, shine on us all. Set us free.
Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Becky, Mary, Todd Run.